Hey guys, how are you? Are we all good on sound? Awesome. So uh, again, welcome. Uh, you made it through the weather. You made it through that Miss Unstable lady, which is awesome. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about truth and how truth is efficient and then, you know, different levels of truth, which is all good. Uh, um, since it's a smaller group, uh, what, we'll, I, what I'd like to do is spend uh, maybe coming through and just working on you just really quick. Pretty much most of you, if we can. Uh, I think we can do that, don't you think? Yeah. So we can do that. Uh, and there's some reverb. So, uh, and I might not hear you because I'm double mic'd. So, so I think that'd be kind of cool too, just kind of work on you, kind of go through the process, do a lot of meta-healings, right, instead of what I'm saying, uh, the concepts and all that, and we'll talk about the concepts, but then it's most important, especially with exponential intelligence, EI, is that it's not about a body of knowledge that you tap into and kind of like find out what it's about, and then you apply it, it's just that it's a body of knowledge that consumes you and then you operate from it. And that's really the key. So it's, it starts to become your identity of who you are. And that it brings you, say, simplicity, right? Because if you've noticed those people who are advanced in EI, things become very efficient. Uh, your emotions become very congruent. Your emotions are always, say, stable. Uh, your emotions get you to the best place, right? Uh, it doesn't distort you. Um, it, you don't have, say, multiple uh, exceptions to the rule because at the lower levels of knowledge or understanding, have you noticed that there's always exceptions to the rule? So again, so we're gonna be talking about all that. Say, for example, uh, you, let's just talk about love. You know, you love somebody, but then if they do X, Y, and Z, then you don't love somebody. If they do this, you do love somebody. In EI, you either love them or you don't, okay? Because as you go to the higher understanding of who you are, again, more efficiency, more efficiency demands that you do what? It's either a one or a zero at that space, the higher level, right? You either are or you're not. There's no gray area in EI, right? That doesn't mean that you become emotionless. It means that you become, if I can make up a new word, emotionful, so, so to speak. You, get, you, you understand the emotions at their fullest level without any taint and without any, so it's concentrated emotion. So if you get angry, for example, the trueness of that anger comes through, it makes you feel good, makes you feel grand, and then you move on to a higher level. So you get to use all your emotions to, again, send you to a higher level. You don't run away from, say, negative emotions, or what is negative emotions? All the stuff that we, you know, like anger, uh, what, jealousy and all that. So as we come into our truth, we start to use everything for the purpose that it was given, and that's really the key. And that's really a defining, say, uh, explanation or a definition on what truth is, okay? Uh, and we'll go into it a little deeper. For now, though, uh, why don't we stand up, whether you're here online, and, and again, there's a lot of people online. Uh, a lot of you are feeling uh, probably a heaviness in you right now, which is good. So let's take a, take a deep breath in, whether you're sitting or standing, uh, whether you're here or not, uh, it doesn't really matter. Just notice where you are, notice the space around you. Uh, how many people are new in this room, just by chance? Okay, just a few. Okay, a few of you, awesome. So again, it's, it's very different than a meditation. Uh, I call it a meta-healing, by the way. Um, and uh, where a meta healing is, I guide you into a deeper state, and I'll explain the difference between a normal meditation and EI meditation, what the difference is. But I guide you into those deeper states, much easier. Even so, if, even if you have issues meditating, I'll guide you into those deeper states naturally. And then, while you're in those deeper states, I'll help you reprogram yourself. Basically, shake your spirit up, going, hey, you're an infinite being, right? What the hell are you doing here at these lower levels of lack? And then that's where you wake up and that's where you heal yourself. Just, it's very short. That's the basic simplistic definition of what exponential intelligence or what I do is about. Okay, waking yourself up just like I did through two near-death experiences, but without the near-death experience. How's that? Hmm? Yeah, that's a lot better, huh? So uh, let's go ahead and take a deep breath in. Again, just noticing your surroundings, noticing the space around you, noticing you coming into this room. Again, you might have seen that mm, crazy lady, a little mentally unstable. Let's just wipe that space off, off you as well. So things like that. 
will actually help or benefit you, help you stay focused because there's distractions. She's just a louder distraction than most everything in your life, right? So she's obvious to you, but how many unobvious say distractions in your life are there that you don't even know about until you wake up, like one day through uh, whatever force or through me, and you go, holy shit, I'm way off track. How did I get there, right? So those are the unobvious, say, distractions. Uh, the way we see ourselves, maybe our religious values, and again, there's nothing wrong with religion if it works out for you, uh, but most people practice it wrong. Uh, most people practice spirituality wrong. Most people practice uh, being a good person wrong. Most people say practice being a human wrong. Okay, we'll get into that as well. And I know that's just pushing all your belief systems, which is really good. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so, uh, as we take a deep breath in again, again, just noticing the space around you, noticing the lighting here, noticing the windows, noticing the difference if you were here earlier compared to today. Uh, I mean, tonight, noticing if you're online, your environment, and any nuances. Even if you've been here a thousand times, there's nuances that you can learn from that you can see today. Wonderful breath in again. As I generate those frequencies that help you shift, help you transform. Perhaps noticing your chest. A lot of people feeling that, say, heaviness or whatever is on your chest. It's the burdens of you, burdens of your family, burdens that you've carried, burdens of society, burdens of humanity. Again, all those lies that you think you are that hold you down. So, as my abilities have gotten stronger, obviously you can sense my frequencies faster. So. Strong breath in again, connecting together as a group, right? We want a all better place to live, abundance, not just for us, but for all. So we're going towards the same direction, whatever abundance might mean to you. We just want a better, say, state of being. Noticing the space. And asking ourselves, well, how do I become my purest potential, the purest possibilities, even stronger? How can I connect to that purest source, even stronger? Noticing your spine. Noticing your spine from the top, where your skull, your head, connects down into the neck, upper back, mid-back, lower back, into your tailbone. Just on your head, do you guys feel kind of like you around you, like you're more aware of you, if that makes sense to you? So notice what that is. Because that's where you want to be. Especially for those who get invaded, you know, people walk on you, people, you take other people's burdens, whether you know it or not just being here. As you settle in, it's the end of the year. It's the end of the month, the end of the year. We're getting to be the end of the month, the year the decade. It's a transitional time. It's a pivotal time. Not just for you, but 
into reality. So what that means is that as you move into that higher level of who you are, you can't take any of the baggage or any of the lies with you. So this first session, helping you become aware of your strengths, kind of like packing. You need to move on, you know you need to move on. What are you gonna take with you? If you've noticed what you've brought into this reality, as you note your spine, the back of your head, your ears, your forehead, You brought all the baggage of your family. So when you were born, you were the latest version of your family. Think of it that way. So all the diseases, the heartache, whatever else, you were a mixture of mom and dad, their mom and dad, their mom and dad, so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. So on. There's a lot of good things that's brought into you, but then there's a lot of burdening events, situations. Along with that, because we're all interconnected, it's like network computers. Something happens to one computer, other people feel it. Animals do that. If you've seen studies, read studies, Say a chimp figures out a way to crack a nut on another island soon after that chimp figures out, right? That consciousness awakens. We're all interconnected. And it's not just by species. If a chimp, say, advances, humans advance. If a grapefruit advances, humans advance. So it's not just you that you're burdening, but you're actually burdening other huma humans animals, pretty much everything. So. Hope that scares you or bums you out so you can kick yourself in the butt and be your best possible self, right? As we uh, take a deep breath in again, helping you pull into your best possible self. Again, void of standards of any type, but the best possible human that you could be. Void of religious standards, spiritual standards, societal standards. Those are all great tools, but again, those are all great tools. It's not you. Sometimes we start to define our preferences as us, right? I'm sick, or I'm not good, or I can't do anything right, or I'm X religion, I'm not supposed to do that, or I'm a good person. So again, it's a value system that might be, say, incongruent to your best possible self. So maybe you hold on to that self, even as I'm talking, you know, about it, you're very defensive, which is fantastic. As we take a deep breath in, Just to give you an idea, it's the science behind it. Say your family has heart issues, or cancers, or abortion type issues, or loss of babies, or whatever it might be. How many generations back does it go? PTSD issues. See, it'll go back a long ways. So those are standards that aren't beneficial for you, nor the system, even if you love it. Abuse patterns, addiction patterns. Again, it's not just probably you, 
look back in your family, grandparents, great-great-grandparents, and so on, and so on, and so on. So that's a cumulative total of where you are. Noticing the top of your head will generate some higher frequencies. If you were the perfect center, again, top of your head, through your neck, through your torso, through the groin. If you compare that to the animal kingdom or nature, say heart disease ran in animals, again, wild animals, not contained animals, within one or two generations, that heart disease would be gone. They would cure themselves of heart disease because evolution works in perfection in animals, plants. They don't carry disease, distortion, abuse, anything. More than just say a few generations because they learn and they get better. Humans don't do that because we have a consciousness higher than, say, animals, but again, it allows us to have free will, so we tend to carry on all that stuff. As we take a deep breath in again, the question is, what do you want to carry on? Noticing your abdominal muscles from your uh, solar plex right into the groin. You might be feeling heavy, maybe even tired. It's okay. If you fall asleep, it's totally fine. As a note, a lot of stuff will show up for you. That stuff's been there all the time. Not me. Some of you might associate it to me. Again, it's all the garbage that you brought in here that you can't take with you anymore in the new paradigm. So this first meta-healing was about identifying at a deeper layer the heaviness that's holding you back, weighing you down, basically all the lies that you live. Just noticing the space around you, opening your eyes whenever you need to, if you haven't done so already, exhaling, connecting to anything inanimate, the floor, the ceiling, the chair, whatever it might be. Uh, you can have a seat if you like. So as you notice, guys, it's not really a conscious, say, talk. It's literally about helping you, well, helping you understand what's not and what is, and just disconnecting it from you, okay? Um, just give me a second. So the name of this talk, and we'll kind of go through it briefly, uh, but most importantly, what I wanna do is, uh, again, work on almost all of you. I think I can work on all of you. Um, and then show you the lies that everybody lives through, okay? Basically the filters, all those things for you. That's all fair? And then you can see pattern after pattern after pattern. It's like, God, it's all bullshit. It just literally is all bullshit. We, we don't know how to define ourselves as human because we've learned, right? If you look at any animal, do you know how precise they are? They're like in time, they're just like so present if you've noticed that, right? Does that make sense to you guys? Right? Again, animals that are <laughs> uh, uh, 
um, not domesticated, right? Just wild type animals. You, any picture you'll see, they're just like so present and so intense. Sometimes I, um, Fei Fei asks me, he's like, why do you look so intense? It's just because why? Well, that's just the way I am. I'm not, uh, you know, sad or anything like that. I'm just intense because I'm so present. You know, I'm just like analyzing and just loving every moment of the space, whether it's. Uh, again, somebody yelling at me or anything else, I'm just like centered, enjoying my space because that's what it's about. That's what animals do, okay? So to me, overall, truth is about how present are you, okay? Void of anything else. So in a sense, if you look at it from that, say, description, it literally filters out everything else about truth that you believe in. Right? It makes it very, very simple. So in today's standard, how do you define truth? Um, there's lots of parameters. I lost my space, sorry about that. Uh, so if you have to define truth the scientific way, there's, lot, again, multiple variables, time frames. Right? Time frames change. What was true, say, 100 years ago, or maybe even a year ago, is very different, the truth is, today. So was that true? then, right? So you have to think about that. What was true when you were a kid, when you were a baby, into adolescence, into you know, your 20s, and now you're older, probably isn't true anymore. When you get older, what you think is true now is not gonna be true. So is that truth? Okay. So if you think about that, and then say, realities for you. Now some of you go in and out of realities, okay? So for, say, for example, uh, especially those individuals who are really easily malleable. So you hang out with somebody, their truth becomes your truth. And then say when you break up with them, you start to see your truth. Does that make sense to you? So was that true for you? Although we might think it's true. Political systems. Right, government standards, governments change, right? You Democrat, Republican, right? There's a truth that everybody feels, right? They have a certain mission. So is that the truth? Uh, other uh, desires, right? You know, when you really want something, do you know how you can bend the lies to help you get what you want? Then it's real for you. So is that truth? Right? And everybody goes, well, I'm a nice person, I'm truthful and stuff, but are you really, you know, at your base level definition of truth, are you really? Think about it. Uh, objectives, the same thing as drives, and then so many other, say, variables, time constraints, if you're hurried, compared to if you're not, right, your truth changes. So what truth are we looking for? And then that's not just say, short-term truth, you play the same game or you have the same objective on long-term tr truth. Your life values, your structure, and so on like that are all derived from the multiple uh, variables that we don't even understand, mostly like emotional values, okay? If you were, say, beaten up as a child and you grow up and then you would see this place as a mean place, so is that the truth? Because somebody else that has a very different reality would see it very differently. So is there the truth? So, and then everybody fights for the truth. If you look at all, of, all the religions, all, and even spiritual standards nowadays, right? are they truth? So where do you go? Uh, as we come into this, say, this time, this point in time, and that's why there's a lot of, say, distortion or confusion, because more and more people are finding out that none of that stuff is true at all. What you hear on the internet or see on the internet and all that stuff, you know, you're getting to be so, say, there's so many messages that are coming out. I don't know how many, like, millions of hours of video that gets uploaded to YouTube every day like millions of hours of YouTube video a day. So there's so much, and you think, well, I don't watch YouTube or I don't watch that. It still affects you because there's enough people that has a consciousness, right, that watch 
which affects you, like we talked about the, the monkey, right? It affects you, so. So we need to take a, a more scientific approach on what truth is, right? So like in science, things should work out pretty much every time, each and every time, and it should be duplicatable. That's a fair standard for truth. Does that make sense to you? Right? Just like science, right? Uh, and that's how they study science projects or science theories and stuff. Say a scientist figures out a certain calculation or a certain, say, principle, whatever, they hand it off to some other scientist, see if they can duplicate it. And if they can, well, it becomes fantastic or you know, something uh, validated, so to speak. But even is that the truth? Because every, I think, three decades, every about 20 or 30, yeah, about 30 years, close to 30 years, science experiments that have been validated for truth, they change. So every three decades. What they believe now, back then, is like something totally different. So even in those cases where they're duplicatable, you see that, well, that's not the real truth, okay? And if you have any exceptions to the rule, it's, this is true in these certain situations, but it's not true in these situations, then is that the truth? So all those things are distorted, right? They're basically, I'm not saying they're lies, but they're not the top level truth, okay? And, and let me just get this out of the way so we kind of understand it. Um, do you know why there's always an exception to the rule? Because you're not at the top level truth, okay? So, and that's why it's so confusing for people, right? Say that you, say that you're at a lower level, right? You're a lower, lower level consciousness, so to speak, right? There's gonna be a lot of truths that you adhere to. So you get to the higher level, the next level up, Right? And you look down and you go, well, wait a second, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense, right? So the possibilities or the exceptions to the rule become you know, less and less. You go to the higher level of understanding, again, the possibilities or the exceptions to the rule become less. So you go to the higher level, the utmost highest level, and then to me that's the definable truth because in every situation it works every time and there's no say exceptions to the rule. If you look at EI, if you've heard of me all the time, my message hasn't changed. It's become clear, more consistent, but it hasn't changed. In religious practices, if you look, they've always updated the Bible, the Quran, the details, the messages, you know, and again, I'm not offending anything, I'm just calling a fact, back in the day, you know, gays or lesbians or uh, colored individuals, they weren't allowed in the church. It was said in the Bible. But then, you know, about five, 10 years ago, could be longer, it's like, oh, now it's okay. Or if you were, you know, pregnant out of wedlock or something, you couldn't be in the church according to God's rules. But now you can. So even, so obviously not God's rules, but, you know, all those scenarios are, say, untrue. So it doesn't fit well. But so going back to that, say, standard, of exceptions to the rule, think of any belief system that you believe in right now. Whatever that you believe is true. And I'll help you out. Um, go ahead and close your eyes. Just notice what you notice. Noticing your neck, noticing the way you're sitting, standing, lying down, whether you're here, whether you're online. I'll just make it really fast for you. Put you into those deeper states. Usually, there's a single truth that dominates every aspect of your life. Basically, I call it a frequency for you that you operate by. So if I had to work on each one of you, tell you that, Let's do that as a group level. So imagine me walking up to you, 
scanning you. You can feel me, you can sense me. Take a deep breath in. What would I say that your pattern or single truth that you operate life by? What shows up? I can read some of you. I'm not deserving. Somebody else in the middle there. Uh, I always lose everything of value. I think we all have that feeling or knowing. Does that make sense to you guys? So we can go deeper. Are we good on, did we all get the truth? Okay, or something that came up? So we'll continue on, take a deep breath in. Notice your chest, your sternum bone. Okay, apply that to any situation that you want. Anything that you want in your life or how you see your life. Notice how that affects how you see everything. It's very simple. There's no gray area. It's a single truth. You look at every situation, every action that you do, whether you're aware of it, the way you age, the way you eat, the way you love, everything is based on that one single frequency or truth that you abide by. It's not that you don't even believe it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it. That's another thing about truth. People go, well, I really believe it in my heart. I know in my heart's heart, that's bullshit. It's not true. I mean, it might be true for you, but that truth or what you feel in your heart is dictated by that one single frequency and it makes it true for you. People go, well, trust your emotions, trust your intuition, that's total bullshit. It's all dictated by that one programming. Your emotions are gonna get you to that truth. Look at it, look at your relationships that you've had. If you run abusive patterns, you go from person to person to person, I see, what, 100,000 people? Same damn relationships, different package. Same damn relationships. Because that truth has to exist in every possible situation for you. Every possible situation. Not just one, not just two. Even if you, say, go away from it. Say you make a lot of money, or you marry somebody, that's very different. In a very short time, you'll come back and feel the same way. In a very short time, again, like a lot of my clients, upper end clients, that money will abuse the hell out of them if they're running abusive patterns. Because again, that single truth has to create itself. It can't lie. You can't dis change. So that's the kind of truth I'm talking about. Not what God is about, not what you believe in or anything like that, because those change. And again, they're all true. I'm not saying your stance on whatever is wrong, it's off. That's where the issues we have. It's about what you see, how you see this reality. So they're all true. If you believe this world is uh, full of abuse, you're, you're absolutely right. If you believe this is a fantastic playground, you are absolutely right. And everybody fights over that. Those are surface level stuff, and it changes, it dictates. It doesn't, it, it, there's no, say, constants to it. Everything is a variable for you. So that's the truth. 
It's very simplistic. Once you understand that truth, and that's what I push you into, you start to see patterns. Does that make sense to you? You start to see patterns. You don't see that one experience and go, gosh, why did I get beat up again? You start to see patterns of truth and that's where truth really comes out for you. Okay? And then it's measurable. Even if you have, well, how can you measure patterns of abuse? Look at all the situations that you've been in and look how many times you've been abused. It works every single time. The equation always, always works out. It's not a null equation for you, right? So what is the I truth? Well, I just basically explained it. That's the truth, okay? However, there's a singular truth and as you ascend higher and higher, the, the singular truth, okay? Uh, let me explain how, say, this reality is created for you, for those who are new. Um, so, say you're an infinite being, your spirit body, I don't know, uh, your higher self, your etheric body, I call it your vital force, okay? You create this reality, right? But you're an infinite being, so you can't resonate at such a low say frequency, to create reality, to like touch and feel. So what you've done, it's a fantastic, uh, say science approach, or is basically you've learned to slow your frequencies down, deeper and deeper, slower and slower, okay? So let me explain, uh, just to give you an idea. The lower notes of a music, okay? They're very slow, right? And the pitches get higher and higher and higher, right? They go high enough so that we can't hear them, but they're still there. They go higher and higher and higher, the same frequency, different amplitude, right? They resonate differently. Again, it's the same frequency, different amplitude. They turn into light. First of all, they turn into heat. So that sound wave turns into heat. Heat turns into, say, light frequencies. You go higher and higher and higher, x-rays, so on like that. And then you go higher and higher into a timeless realm. So that's where you are. Your being is a timeless realm. So how do you create the density, well you put filters in yourself. First of all, you say create this reality, that's one filter on how time and space works, because you're a timeless being. And I know I might be going a little deep, it'll sink into you later, because you already know this stuff, I'm just helping you remember it, okay? But for those who are a little interested, more sciencey, okay? So that first filter for you is say time and space, on how this reality works, because you have to understand that for you to, say, create or materialize. Basically, the Lego blocks of this reality, okay? From that another layer is like, oh, I'm human form. So that's another filter that you have, okay? Your human form. Say if you were a squirrel, or if you were a bird, you'd have an identity or form of a bird, and then you would all have all the logistics of what birds do. Like say, for example, they fly south, and they have no idea why they fly south. They have a consciousness that's pre-built in them. Squirrels, say for example, well, will gather nuts. They were born in the springtime. They have no idea what snow is about. Their parents don't teach them. But why is that all logged into them? Because they have a filter of, I'm a squirrel. This is what squirrels do. You guys have a filter of, I'm a human. This is what humans do. So within that filter, you have an optimal level human, just pre-built in you. The most optimal level human that you can have. Just like a computer program, right? It has the optimal level of say uh, CPU speed, or your car, right? Has the optimal level on how fast you can drive it, depending on how, say, good of a driver you are. Does that make sense to you so far? Okay, so where do you operate at that optimal level? Somewhere from zero to wherever. So, so most of us don't obviously operate from that level. So there's another filter, you're human now. Well, I'm a man or a woman. That's another filter that you have. You see yourself, your body uh, changes for, from a man, to a, hum, uh, a man to a woman, whatever it might be. So that's a huge filter. But that filter is, if you're a woman or a man, all the experiences that men and women have had is all basically poured into this database. You are a cumulative total of that every day. So whatever happens in the consciousness, you're running it. Whether you want to be a part of it or not, it doesn't matter. It's a software update. You're all connected. So that's a filter that you're feeling, 
okay? There's more filters, where you were born, say culture, skin color, time frame, all those family value structures, filter upon filter upon filter till it gets to you. So do you see how many lies are in each layer? Okay. Animals don't do that. Animals are just consistent because they're the purest form of themselves. So I'll even go as far as saying animals don't have spirits because they just are. Their spirit frequency, their consciousness has turned into something solid. We need to get dumbed down to come here. That's why there's a separation of ourselves. Okay? That's a different talk. So if we were highly realized, let's say, we wouldn't really have this identity. We wouldn't have human form. Animals do have spirits, let me just clarify, but there's no animal form and their spirit. Does that make sense? They just are. So we have to get dumbed down because we have a higher consciousness. It's not a bad thing. It allows us to go way beyond what I call super, uh, uh, archetype superhuman. But for us, for you, again, we get dumbed down. If we were completely awakened, we wouldn't need to be dumbed down. We could just exist in here in that high level without, say, having this human form. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So that's what we're trying to get. That's that one truth. So now that we understand that, <gasps> hi kitties. That's my girls. Well, not all of them, the three. Do you guys want to stand up, Sudi? Just say hi. And that's my son. So, so nice to see you here, honey. Um, my heart just went, <gasps> even before I saw him, I was like, oh, wow. um, where was I? So what we're trying to do, okay, and outside of religion, this is what Jesus was saying, okay? The way to get to that completeness that you are, there's only one way to get there, and then it's got misconstrued, okay? What he was saying is that the only way to understand your truth, basically remove yourself of this filter of this human identity and live in pure form, okay, is to awaken. That's the one single truth. It's the only path. It's the only way, okay? There's no other way. That's what Jesus' message was. Unfortunately, again, it's like, Jesus is the way. You have to take Christianity, all that stuff. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about awakening. Any way that you can, you can awaken is totally cool, as long as you awaken and you ascend, okay? So that's the single truth that we're all, say, vying for or living for. That's the only purpose you're here in this physical form. It's not to save the planet. It's not to, I don't know, save people. It's not to create something fantastic, you know, a great invention, concept, idea, whatever. Because where do you think those inventions come from? Like cellular phones and all that, right? Like Tesla, where did he get his ideas or concepts? He went out into the ethers somewhere. So those things are already there. They're just like radio signals coming in and then we develop it. So again, we don't have to develop something new. We've, the consciousness is there, we develop it here. Does that make sense to you guys? We didn't invent anything. We just like channeled, so to speak. So again, so that puts me back to the only, everybody wants is like, what's my, I don't know, what's my future? What's my purpose in life? Your purpose is to awaken at such a high value that you don't need this reality or this body. You can stay in this reality just like the animals do, okay? And that's our purpose, but once we stay there and once we get it, then you can go way beyond, and that's where things get really cool for us, okay? Some of you go through the detox process, so I'll just talk about that, because. Even if you're new, you'll probably go through some detox tonight because again, my frequencies as the year ends gets a lot stronger, uh, especially at the end of the decade. Transparency of truth coming out. Okay, I don't want to talk too much about that because then uh, I can't work on you. We can talk about it another time. Um, one thing I do want to talk about is fighting for truth versus standing for truth. Because okay? a lot of people 
especially as we you know, go into this age of, say, transparency, we always start to fight for the truth. You always fight for the truth. You always say, fight for yourself to stand here, right? But if you are, do you really have to fight? So, and I say that because it's very different because people who run, say, victim type mentalities or say the underdog type mentalities, they're fantastic people, they bring out the truth, but then since they're not living it themselves, that truth doesn't sustain itself. Does that make sense to you guys? So that's why I'm giving you guys. So in this reality, if you really wanna be that underdog, don't be the underdog, okay? You live your truth and nobody can destroy you. That crazy lady, I'm not the first person that she's attacked. There's been people in here, there's been people that she's run out, she's mentally disturbed. I mean, not her, but it messes up the speakers here. Again, I'm not the first one she's attacked, right? But I stand my truth, it doesn't affect me. We keep growing and growing. So, so what about you though? You always fight for yourself. You always fight for your right. You always fight for not being abused. Why would that be? Because you're lying to yourself. People are attacking you. People are, say, eavesdropping on you. People are doing all that stuff. It's you. I'm not saying that to be mean, but it literally is you. Okay? Anything that you've gone through, because you didn't stand for the truth. You weren't who you are at a complete self. Does that make sense to you guys? So when you live the truth, is it, and you've all experienced in that, you know, you get attacked, you get attacked, you get attacked or whatever it is, right, you, or you get abused, and then all of a sudden you expand into your higher self, do you notice that abuse just disappears? Things just disappear, right? It's not that the situations change around you, you changed, forcing the situations around you to change. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so with that in mind, um, why don't we, we'll do a meditation. Yeah, since we, I, I just wanna work on the VIP to make sure. But, so we'll do a meditation, say at 9.30, and then we'll work on the VIPs like full on, okay? So you get your uh, value. Uh, anybody that wants to come up, uh, especially the new people, uh, if that'd be fantastic for you. Um, just come on up uh, and I'll tell you, say the pattern that you're running. Um, sure, you can come up. I mean, I've worked on it before, but yeah. Um, well, even from today compared to, well, earlier today where you are now, uh, you're more, say you're, at first, you'll have to say fight for the truth too bring it up, does that make sense? Because you've played such a victim mentality, always getting beat up, well I can't do it. So it, again, I use that example as the dog, you know, a dog that senses fear in you, it'll attack you, does that make sense? So at first you'll have to stand your ground, okay? But then after that, you'll see that people won't attack you anymore, right? Your husband, your kids, whatever it is, they won't say slaughter you, does that make sense to you? But again, you, I can't, I can reprogram you, and that's the thing about free will, or that's the thing about EI, I can reprogram pretty much anything in you, okay? Even like removing cancer, again, it's not me, I'm not saying I cure anybody, but when you awaken to that pattern, you have a chance to go, well, do I want cancer or not? And many people refuse, and they heal themselves. So, so basically what that is, is again, it's, I can delete those patterns from you, but then you have to accept the deletions, okay? So for example, you, you get abused, right? Next time you'll get attracted to abuse or uh, again, your kids, your spouse, we don't need to get into the details. Um, they'll say, abuse you, and then you stand up. You say something, whatever it might be. You can yell, you can do whatever, but again, just get up and say something. Does that make sense? And you come from, a, say, a ferocious type personality, okay, you just get up, you literally will come from a ferocious, it's like, who the hell was that? Anyway, as soon as you step up, this is where you, you go, yes, I want it, your spirit just kicks in and takes over you and steps in, and then you don't get abused. That part I can't do for you, 
Does that make sense to you? I think you were here just as a pep talk, just to push you forward. <laughs> so. And your son working today, he might get a little, say, all over the place uh, a bit as he gets a little confused, but then he becomes more and more solid and he'll actually look up to you. And then if he continues, obviously he will. Uh, bring him into the 21 days and you two will get really close, you know, the way a mother uh, child should be. What about my other kids? Um, your other kids? Yeah, they'll follow through. Uh, it just takes a little while. The, your other kids seem that to be connected more to the father because it's an easier pattern to control people. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. But then what happens is that you show your light and they're young enough where they go, you know what, this makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just have to stay in strong. When so. you say that, um, that we're the totality of those before us, mm -hmm. so for me, I had five miscarriages. Do you see that in my ancestry? Or what was that? Yeah. Um, whether it's miscarriages, uh, so what she was asking is that I had you know, five miscarriages. Do you see that in your ancestry? So looking back, um, yes, there's a space where, uh, whether it's a miscarriage, a loss of life, or young children dying somehow mm -hmm. through bacteria, say a flu, virus, whatever it is, I see a lot of that, which probably perpetuated. So that's where you, so, well, so in her lineage as I read her, okay, say uh, five, 10 generations, well, 10 generations ago, uh, there was probably a virus or whatever outbreak. It just like destroyed the kids, the young kids, older people, and then it left, say, like a PTSD type scenario in her genetic structure, right? That's passed along. So for her, in their genetic structure, it dictates that there has to be some sort of loss or some sort of, say, victim type mentality. And that's their truth from now. Does that make sense to you? So, okay. So yes, so you can delete that. The cool thing about it is as you delete it, your kids don't have to run that pattern which is really cool about what we do. It literally starts to change your genetic structure, okay? So this is the same thing where, again, you can look it up, where um, people who have gone through war, right, and then a few generations down, those people elicit the same, say, war-type scenarios, and they've never seen war. They'll hoard, they'll do whatever, have PTSD symptoms, the same PTSD symptoms as somebody being, say, under fire or whatever, and they've never seen war. So the same genetic structure, the same way you get your hair color, eye color, all that stuff, you get everything else into it. Say that somebody says, hey, your eyes just look like your aunt. Well, it's, most, it's more than just your eye color, the way you, the eyes, everything, relationship structures, patterns, uh, whatever else, you've adopted like your aunt as well, okay? So, um, and I can say that safely that when people say that and then they work with me, their eye, even sometimes their colors, start to change into their natural state, not their aunt's, for example. So it goes that far when you change. So anybody else? Don't be shy, come on up, buddy. Um, anything special? I'll just work on you. So as you age, there seems to be, say, illness that runs in your pat pattern, in your family. Basically, you get to a certain point, and it's like, shit, I'm old, uh, I better get some kind of disease or some kind of, say, illness, so I can't live the rest of my life because I'm old. That's the pattern that you live. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. so, so, and then, you're awakened, and you get to see your parents, for example. You get to see, and then you get to sense, shit, I'm pull, I wanna pull away from that because I don't wanna be like my parents. I Because it's so real to you, because it is real to you, but again, you're awakened. So you're pulling away, it's like, what do I do? How do I do that, right? So if you don't, again, through EI or somehow, you don't awaken that, this is your life. So that's a filter, basically, that's the program that he operates, right? It's the same recipe as, mostly your mom from what I'm seeing. 
Uh, it's the same recipe as mom. Dad just like perpetuates it for you, right, or supports. So basically in your father-mother relationship, your mom was drama, your dad would support the drama or be there to save her, so to speak, and then she would create more drama, and then your dad would be save her, and so on like that. Does it make sense to you? So for you, say you're single, you would create drama internally, mostly illness and so on, an excuse, and then you would save your ass, and then go on. So uh, you're getting sick of that, basically. So. So anyway, let's help you release that. It's mostly like circulation type issues, stiffness, uh, again, not a doctor, but hardening of the arteries, those types of patterns, you know what I mean? And it's just like, uh, you go downhill at a certain age. Even that's a belief system. Uh, I wanna say 50, uh, a little past mid 50s in his family, like once you hit this 50 mark, you go downhill, you get ill. There's other family members where you hit, say, whatever age, X age, and you die. Literally, literally, it's like, all the women in our family, they die around 60, or whatever it is, right? A similar pattern. Do you see how strong that pattern is? Even if you were perfectly well, you would get into a car accident. Say, that family, that, that they would have to die. So, so, so again, look how much control you have. You really don't. Because if that's the pattern your spirit is running, that's the pattern you're gonna get. The key is to awaken to the truth of who you are, and then, well, you move on. So what I was doing for you is, whatever this garbage is in this area, I was just peeling it away because that's not you. And it just seems like your parents might be getting a little older, so they're looking to you to suck the life out of you. That's why you probably don't wanna go see your mom or dad. Does that make sense to you? Well, that's why. Because they literally will latch on to you. It's like, oh, fresh meat. That's another, <laughs> that's another 10 years. That's the way you feel, buddy. Every time you've gone home, right, you walk away. It's like, what the hell happened? Mm -hmm. Especially in this area, right? Well, yeah. So, yeah. go ahead. Do we have a mic uh, for her? Because then. Oh. So, it, it is always a nervous tightening. Yeah. And I can't, uh, everything I think, it's the negative. You know, it's just, a, it, it's just a, a good thought and then a negative thought. Good exactly. Thought negative thought. Yeah. You can never, you're always like, oh, I'm up. And then all of a sudden, mother's yeah. pattern, just like, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> so so yeah. the reason for that is because you become so weak when you age, again, late 50s, you go, oh, forget it. I'm just gonna run their pattern. I'm too tired. That's why they do that to you. But I'm feeling and I want to get there. The, uh, well, you the are. This March, next few, go, this flesh. next, yeah, you keep doing the 21 days, buddy, because you're at a break point. Mm -hmm. And why I say that is because you're getting really, really frustrated with your life. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to you? You're looking around, you're gonna go back to your parents and go, I'm not doing that and then that gives you enough gumption, okay? So that's what EI does for you. All right, buddy? Um, we need to move on. Anybody else? Um, yeah, come on. And maybe, thanks, buddy. Uh, maybe you can pick, it does, okay? Yeah, come on up for you. You wanna just grab the mic? Um, we'll just work on your hip structure. That makes sense to you? This area, because, uh, Again, you might be fit and all that right now. As you age, you guys get stiff. Uh, and then yeah, this is where bone structure gets harder, you know, porcelain-like, porcelain uh, your nerves start to dry up, or you know, nerves, arteries, and so on, they harden. Again, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just telling you what I see. So uh, again, vital, and then as you age, it just slowly. And then as you age, how old are you, do you mind? 53. Okay, 53. Yeah, you got a little more time, like in your mid-60s, uh, it just like perpetuates. And it's not because it's a pattern, but you know, bone density and all that, at a certain point it just decays, so it's more of a, say, chemical. But did you have a question, on, Or you just don't care? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that you're here, you just want that out of you. Yeah, but. Yeah, I just recently realized I'm a truther. So. 
A what? A truther. Truther? I like that word. Yes. That's my word. Perfect. So, yeah, um, part of that is you're seeing your body structure and going, that's not the truth. Mm-hmm. I can live another way. Because, you know, people, people understand that it's the truth, right? It's like, well, my father had a heart attack. That must be the truth. Mm-hmm. I'll probably have a heart attack when we get to, because we expect that, right? And we think, well, that's the truth. That's bullshit. This is total Oh, my kids are here, so that's a lie. (laughs) Hi, kitties. (laughs) Anyway, um, so let's get rid of that. So what you will experience, and you're probably starting to experience, uh, even down to, you know, the simple things, uh, the way you brush your teeth, whatever, it's like, wait a second, who is this? Is this me doing it, or is it somebody else? Does that make sense to you? That's through the work that you've done. It's like you're analyzing every piece of, say, programming. Like, where did you learn how to brush your teeth, right? And then, say there was a lot of drama around brushing your teeth or getting ready in the morning. When you brush your teeth, just like a Pavlovian response, you've all heard of Pavlov's dog, right? Right, they ring the bell, they salivate. Same thing here. She brushes her teeth, she gets anxious, and so on like that. Right? And then it's like, I'm tense for the day, I'm nervous, and it's like, and now you're going, wait a second, there's nothing to be nervous about. You see how that pattern comes through? If you, if you look back, so that's why, so the next time you brush your teeth, you go, you know, I don't need that nervous pattern anymore. I can just brush my teeth and enjoy it, make it a ritual for you to, say, become more connected with yourself. Um, and no offense, um, um, let's see. Intimacy, all that stuff, just kind of bland for you, because there's no connection there. That's another pattern that you can disconnect from. You know, you're vibrant, and that's why you're so vibrant, and you want to feel that vibrancy, but then you want to feel that vibrancy during intimacy, and it's like, damn, what happened, right? So, because the underlying frequency for you is to, say, kind of wither away. So, just getting rid of that for you, okay? Yeah, and you're at the breaking point. Literally, so. My biggest problem is actually um, my lifelong insomnia. We can work with that. Just sure. Yeah. Either invaded or attacked or uh, something uh, during the night hours. So yeah, not anymore. So I probably didn't. Pick. I think earlier on, mm-hmm. but I don't. Right now, it's like you're afraid of being attacked because you're clean from the last one, two, three, four three, last month especially, yeah. from what I'm saying, right, you're clean. Yeah. Before you'd get attacked. So yeah, so now, again, it's more of a fear of getting attacked. So now that you're fine, you can be comfortable with not getting invaded. So yeah, I can see that. Yeah, very nice. Nice job. This is, again, a pivotal point for you. Um, anybody else, guys? We've got to make it really quick if we want to get Come on up. Uh, Hi, sweetie. Um, So I worked on you earlier today, and even from earlier today till now, do you see like you're more in your body? I do. You're you're feeling your completeness before you're in your head. Even it's like, how do I walk into this building? It's like you're, you know what I mean? Now it's just like, hey, I'm just walking into this building, and like experiencing it. That's really, again, a very fast shift. And it's not psychology, it's not NLP, it's, it's not like what do I have to do, it's literally I'm living it. She's living that knowledge, okay? So I say that because you're always thinking, True. right? Mm-hmm. So the knowledge for you is first you be it and then you go to a higher level and then the knowledge makes sense for you, okay? And then when you do that, you start to heal anything from the past because you know, you'll go back to a higher level of Say you'll experience whatever happened to you. How old are you? I want to say 40. Uh, 38. You feel older to me. So you'll probably f- go back. Um, something happened to maybe your mom or dad at 40, 42. My dad passed away at 54. Okay, 50. Um, I can see that. Something happened. I think he found out he was sick or something, whatever. So it was some kind of that kind of stopped or distorted. Mm-hmm. So at 42, your mom or dad? My dad passed away, but my... So, 
Yeah. But whatever that is, it literally stopped. So it's like you aged to that time frame, say where your mom was. Mm -hmm. So whatever happened to, so for, for her, for example, say something happened to her mom at 42, by the time she hits 42, same s train oh, stop. She got fibromyalgia then. Okay, there you go. So everything kind of stopped for her, mm -hmm. or basically she died right mm -hmm. there, right? And she hasn't progressed beyond that point. Exactly. So like I said, just time stops. So basically, she repeats 42 over and over and over again. She doesn't grow, and that she's stuck at 42. So for you, you're headed down that, not anymore, but you were, say at 42, 43, something will happen to you, a divorce, a death, whatever, that just like, you don't grow. So you, you'll probably kind of get close to that, and then you go, nope. That's not my stop anymore, mm -hmm. and then you can move on, okay? So, do you guys see how that works? Okay. And by the way, as I work on one person, if you have a similar patterns, okay, we'll be working on you as well, uh, even if you're online. So, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you're feeling your groin area now more as well, yeah, again, even from earlier today till now, which is really cool for women especially because you know over time, women haven't become really strong women. It's the same thing for men, but mostly women. Um, and now you're coming into, say, a strong self of, sense of self, mm -hmm. right? You're like a strong woman. And this is very different than women who use masculine frequencies to become a strong woman, right? I don't care who you talk about that is successful. I can guarantee that they ran a masculine frequency, whether it's Oprah, I don't know, uh, even Princess Diana or all those individuals, masculine frequencies to get where they got. They lose their identity as a woman, okay? I work with a lot of high level women like that. They don't like being a woman. So, nice job, sweetie. You're welcome. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, you, come on up. Hi, sweetie. Um, do you have a brother or something, you, somebody you took care of when you were younger? It just feels like you took care of somebody. No, but I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Can you talk into the yeah, mic? Yeah, so I feel like for a year I've been in really higher states of consciousness, and mm -hmm. recently I've started to play in the game more and actually trying to manifest things. Yep. And I feel like as that has happened, or as I've been doing that, my nervous system has been freaking out and I don't know, just like trying to play in this game and not get distracted and not fall yeah. into like believing that other people actually have control in my universe. Yeah, okay, so that's basically what I'm seeing. So yeah, this it, right here is like. Yeah, like right that. down to your bone structure. Yeah, I see that. So it might not be of a while, but yeah, even I wanna say when you were 14, 15, something or someone took over you. That's why I say, do you have somebody that you take care of? So, um, so I'll tell you what I see. Empath. You're an empath? Well, yeah. So, so people like her, for example, they'll call upon some being to help her connect. Does that make sense? That being is on the other side, so even if they're dark, they're higher than people here Okay, because most people aren't awakened, let's say, they'll feel good. So at 14, 15, that's where you started to get your abilities and you go, wow, that's really cool. Does that make sense to you? Or no? Yeah, I had really bad depression, I remember. Yeah, didn't want to get into the details. I mean, it's your yeah. call if you want to share. But anyway, around that time, so you get bad depression, you disconnect, you ask for help. Does that make sense to you guys? Something comes in, and then say 16, 17, that depression say lifts off, for example, from what I'm seeing, and it's like, yeah, it's good. But then that open space for you, basically something else connects for you, okay? So let's get rid of that. So now I'm seeing, and it could be anybody, I'm just seeing, say, a masculine frequency that you've connected that committed suicide, um, that say, so when you're playing the high consciousness game or whatever that yeah. you call it, basically that person on the other side is giving you that ability again. Let's not do that. So, 
and I don't know. It, it could be, say, you go to a hospital, uh, but it is somebody that committed, say, suicide or massively depressed and committed suicide, whichever way. So, oh, let's see, a friend. So it's like a friend of your friend that committed suicide, and it could have been a while back, like two, three know. years ago. I know that when I was little, there was an entity in my room. And my parents yeah. used to lock me up in there. Oh. And I remember like astral projecting and kicking at the door because I was really scared. So I probably have some trauma from that. Yep. Maybe that's what you're feeling. Um, no, this is recent. Yeah. But anyway, that door is open when you astral project when you're scared. So that's yeah. why you're always. And then you pick, you gravitate to people that need help and then it feels good to you, but then after a while you have to kick him out because they, well, you lose your identity. Does that make sense to you? It's like a repeat. When you were a kid, teens, and well now, so. Anyway, let's move that away from you. Sounds good? So you'll feel like really blank or dark because you're not connecting to anything, but then your real self, your higher connection comes in, okay? It um, seems like there is like depression or suicide that runs in your family. So, if that makes sense to you. Well, look at your mom. Your mom doesn't seem like she's completely stable or never there. So, does that make sense to you? Probably as a child, she had depression. Yep. So you would have a propensity again to attract suicidal type individuals. Well, your last boyfriend, let's just say he wasn't the most stable from what I'm seeing. I don't date boys. Okay, well, <laughs> so masculine figure? Yeah. Mm. It doesn't matter, boys, girls, you would <laughs> date a masculine frequency. Does that make sense? Because you're the feminine all. frequency. So, mm. think about it. Anyway, the point is that you, again, tend to attract yeah. a frequency. Or, yeah, yeah. The it's like masculine trauma, too. The masculine trauma, okay. That's probably what I think so about. even if you dated, say, a woman, it would be a masculine, abrasive version <laughs> that dominates and controls you. Again, depressed to me. So, does that make sense? A bit. Hmm? A little bit. How was your last relationship? Um, I don't know, it was too healthy that I had to end it because I wasn't growing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a totally <laughs> messed up answer. Too I healthy that I had to end it because yeah, we weren't when growing adventure, anymore. I don't know. So is that really a definition of a healthy Someone relationship? Someone else came in and it was like, here's adventure. And I was like, oh. All right, yeah. I don't know. So, Anyway, the truth will hit you. <laughs> so, yeah. Too healthy that we Okay. Uh, you should write math equations on, and then kind of write out, and you'll go, shit, that doesn't make sense. Uh, anybody else? Uh, you, back there? Yeah, come on up. Um, I've worked on you before, right? Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah, any questions or? Uh, yeah. The, Can you talk to the mic? The first time you worked on me, mm -hmm. um, you said I was on the path of having a heart attack in the uh, yeah. next five years. Just wondering how was that okay. still look for you? Yeah, so basically I probably wouldn't have said it that specifically, but basically like if you didn't change your patterns, you would most likely have the same patterns as your mom or dad. So uh, right now, say you feel really strong so the last, say, few months, you're starting to look at, say, your patterns. Does that make sense to you? And you're going, I don't want that. So you're at a s level of, say, confirming deletions. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't want that, I don't want that. If you're going back to your family structure, or family value systems, you'll, you'll see it plain that you've really moved away from your family values. Does that make sense? So you're, uh, and you get to the point this is where people get to the point where they literally move away from how they age. And that's where you say stop having heart issues and so on like that. 
Again, not a doctor, but yes, uh, very strong. Um, along with that, seems like your diet has changed naturally. You, yeah. So, you know, with that in mind, guys, you know, we force ourselves to have a different diet and all that. But once you resonate at a certain frequency that, say, I'm not in line for a heart attack, then you naturally will adopt to, say, having a diet or health pattern that will, say, accommodate that in the physical form. It's not just like magic. Okay? You literally will change. Does that make sense to you, buddy? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're actually doing really good. Uh, it's a new lease on life for you as well. I see you traveling. Does that make sense to you? Um, and it's not traveling to escape. Maybe in the past you traveled to escape. Now you travel to, say, find yourself, because it's about you now, and you would be the ten type of the person that would, say, fall back like five years, or like reverse aging and so on, and catch up on time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice job. Thank you. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, I'll t yeah, you, you. No, not you, sorry, after the, um, one, two, three, anything special? Have I worked on you before or new or? You've worked with my family before, yeah. Okay, um, anything special or, um, um, I can just read you if you want, whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, when I see you, I see three of you, mm. that makes sense. To you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's a good pickup line, isn't it? No. Um, no, when I see you, you're in three realities. So basically, say you're in fear all the time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You're in fear all the time. So what do you do? When you're a little kid and you're scared and you can't move away from the drama or the abuse, where do you go? You separate from your physical form. Does that make sense mm -hmm. to you? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically you're here, and then it's almost like having two near deaths, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you almost want to die, or you something to that effect, or you got ill or you die. Anyway, she's here. Every time she gets abused or she sees abuse, basically she steps out here. Does that make sense? Some of you can see what I'm talking about. And then she steps out here. But then sometimes in your family pattern, if you don't, say, rectify it, you get older, you get weaker, and then you step out here. Mm. So every time it gets more dramatic because the, f it, the first one didn't fix it, okay? You get to the point where you get really old and you get weaker, and then you step out way over here, and basically your vital source gets disconnected too far from your physical form, and this is where people kind of die pretty fast in your family, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or they get depressed, or maybe say suicidal type patterns, or something happens to them, does that make sense to you? So that's how that happens. It's got nothing to do with, I don't know, disease or issues like that, but it will create disease issues. Depression, uh, unfortunately, again, not a doctor, but say a person that runs her patterns, it's a time distortion, what'll happen for her is that, um, you know, like, what is it, Prozac, or, you know, like psychotic type drugs that help you, you know, the side effects of those psychotic type drugs, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, suicide thoughts, it'd be for her. Because those type of medications, they might pull you into your body, but since she doesn't know how to reference her body or where to create it, it's like it distorts her. It numbs her identity of where she creates herself and she just gets pulled out. So it's the same point as having, say, a tragic experience happen to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So kind of weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, weird. yeah. So, you know, for her, she would take 10, 20 years to go to therapy. You know, they can sit on the couch, talk about all that stuff, but not going to help. Because it's, it's literally rendering yourself in the fourth coordinate. I know that sounds strange, but for her, again, she's always been fearful. So what that means for her is that she's always on the lookout. It's like, when do I jump? Because I never feel safe here. She's just ready to go. 
Like, you know, and especially in a relationship or when it gets tense, it's like, I'm out of here. Boom. Does that make sense? So, anyway. Uh, some of the side effects, because there are side effects, obviously. Say I lock you in, and what we'll do, because it's too extreme for you, we'll just remove one layer for you, so this close layer. So what that means is that you have an opportunity to render yourself here when you get stressed out. You can render yourself here, but you can't go past that. Mm. The reason why I do that for you, because if I render you just completely here, a lot of the memories that you've blocked out of your psyche starts coming in really fast, and then you kind of go on a tailspin, because that identity holds a lot of memories. Does that make sense to you? So basically, closing off this reality, and then some of those memories start to filter into you here. So when that happens, just note it's that it's, you're cleaning up. It doesn't mean that you have to experience it, you're just cleaning up stuff, okay? So, and you'll go, oh, that's why that happened. And you get a chance to heal yourself. And then later on, you know, maybe with another session or whatever, mm-hmm. I can pull from here into here. And then that's where you're good. Just give me a second here. Uh, so do you guys see how that works? It's got nothing to do with depression, chemical malfunctions, things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, in a very short time, since she's out here, it's very intuitive, by the way, so you can use that ability of being disconnected from, say, time to expand the proper way, and she'll get really intuitive. She'll get, say, future vision, and so on like that, really clear, Mm. okay? You do anyway, but it messes you up. So, there you go. But you're feeling safe, more than safe than ever. I mean, more safe than ever right now. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. might think, oh, that's me. And it probably is. But um, because I force you to stay here. So you're just totally present. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can see her face. It's like, wow, that feels really good here. <laughs> you know? So. Well, nice job, Sue. You so you're so welcome. Um, so. When you get to the bottom line issues, again, the frequencies that you resonate at, you know, you fix it, you resolve it really fast. Once you get to know the truth, and again, I see your patterns the way you see it, because I can log into you, that's why it resonates with you. Some of you might go, what the hell are they talking about? But they know what they're talking, you know? That's why. So, because I see it the same way they do. And then they go, shit, that's the way I live. It's like, yeah, of course you do. And then once you resolve it or you wake up, it allows me to go, okay, that's the way you live, but let's just, this is the way you should be living. And they go, oh yeah. And then they heal themselves. So again, I'm not doing the healing. I'm just going, let's do it this way. Uh, Anybody else? Um, Somebody new? I picked on you. You? Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll pick on you after. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Uh, anything special you want to work on other than getting away from your mom? <laughs> so, does that make sense to you? It just seems like you're running away from your family all the time. Okay. Does that make sense? Or yes? No? I don't know. That doesn't make sense. But it doesn't make sense? Are you really close to your family? Okay, so it's the same pattern. You're really close to your family. You're like literally integrated to your family. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's the same thing. So some people with this pattern, they're so, say, interconnected with the problems of their family. One happens, say somebody gets sick, she'll feel the illness in her and vice versa. So some people are, say, in tune with it and they'll go, shit. I want to get away from my family, but basically you're too scared. So the more, say, scared that you get, the more entangled you get to the f- into the family, and then the more distorted you get. So, and then you kind of separate from your family, and you feel good, and then you go, oh, I feel really good. I want to connect with my family again, and then that's where you get entangled. So it's the same pattern. I'm just seeing the opposite. So let's do it this way. Let's help you, say, disconnect. And then basically you're wanna gonna you're gonna wanna get away from the family just to create say space for you. 
and then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll see exactly that you run the same recipe. This is what I was talking about earlier. I don't know how old you are, but say something happened to your mom. I'll say at 54. Whatever happened to her at 54. Does she have heart issues or somebody in her family? She had heart issues. Yeah, so at 54, whatever diagnosis, heart type issues from what she's saying. Yeah, so at 54, what is she gonna have? How old are you? 56. Okay, you, do you have heart type issues or you probably get a little, <laughs> um, I don't wanna say anything, I'm not a doctor, but you're really sensitive to sugars. Yes, that's true. So basically, for you, you might have missed the 54, but close enough, 58 or so. So if you continue on with heart issues, I mean, sugar type addictions or patterns, mm -hmm. um, it, and it's not that your heart, but the nerves that radiate go into your heart mm -hmm. will have issues. And even now, if you realize it, you're not as, it's like you, you get tired a bit easier, or short breaths, or sometimes you kind of skip breaths from what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Well, those are kind of heart issues. So again, not a doctor, but you should have your heart checked out, Sudi, because it just, it's not like, rhythmic like a heart should be, okay? And I might be off, <sighs> who knows? But it's just best to check, okay? So <laughs> let's disconnect you, I'm not pushing you down, that's just you separating, one, two, three. You always run in groups of three, so you'd be the fourth person. So, does that make sense? So you probably have three, two sisters and a mom or something to that effect. Uh, it's almost a, a female frequency, that doesn't mean that it, it can't be a man. It could be a man that's feminine, you know, feminine frequency. They don't have to be gay or anything, but a feminine frequency. So it's always like that pattern. So that group is instilled in you, and if you look, you would have three other friends at school. You hang out with three other people in your 20s and so on and all that. You see how that pattern works? Does that make sense to you? It's always groups of, even that, the groups of say three that she hangs out or four, it's dictated. It just literally is, it's a pattern. It has to operate. It can't be five, it can't be three, it has to be four. If there is three in a very short time, it'll ramp up to four. So anyway, uh, you'll probably hate your friends, your family. Anybody, <laughs> okay? And then you'll go, what the hell happened? I love my family. It's not that you love them, it's just that you need to get close to them so you guys can suck the life out of each other and then pass on <laughs> issues and burdens and stuff like that, so. So that's why you'll go, God, I hate them. And it's a good thing, you separate yourself. Mm -hmm. and then you get strong and then you come back together and you can help each other as a strong pack going forward rather than a burden pack, um, you know, hurt going forward. Does that make sense? And life becomes an adventure. So, there you go. And then your next, next structure. But this will probably help you not, so the way I help you, oops, sorry, and then somebody else can come up just for time. Uh, for example, kind of like say, would it be fair to say sugar addictions? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when she sees the truth, she'll look at sugar and you go, I don't need that anymore. So it's not like a, it's a forced pattern of like, I have to stop sugar. You just literally, in a very short time, you probably get sick eating sugar mm -hmm. from what I'm seeing and that stops you really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So that's Thank how you. fast. You're so welcome. Uh, anybody else? Sure, come on up. Sorry. Yeah, you. Oh, I wasn't gonna get, yeah, you're next. Yeah. Okay, so just hold on. Hi, no, come on up. Uh, how are you, anything special you wanna ask me? Just no, just work on you? Okay, uh, seems like as you age, you guys kinda disappear. So if you look at your elders, you know, you're the type or group, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you see them there, but then they're not really there when you, like your elders or your grandparents, they're not. Does that make sense to you? They're off somewhere else. Oh, they're okay. not. They're not in their body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, that's happening to you. Okay. You're not. Basically, uh, you're. I don't know how old. Are, how old are you? Do you mind? Seventy. Okay, so you're seventy, getting close. So over time, basically, you start to 
say, I'm getting ready for death, and you literally like rise above your body while you're living in it, and then life becomes, well, you don't live here, you just wait for death, so like most of your elders, but that doesn't have to be. You're more vibrant, it's like, no wait, I wanna adventure till the last dying breath from what I'm seeing. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So let's help you do that. You've done a fantastic job, you know, doing all, say, the mechanical things, you know, like staying fit, exercising, eating right, all those things that I see you doing, it's fantastic, but if this pattern runs, it dictates that she, say, escapes her body. It just does, so she's done everything right. That's just help further that on. It's like push you in, and that's why you're trying harder and harder and harder, say, as you age, to stay in your body. Does that make sense to you? It does. So that's why. So let's just lock you in. Again, a time reference or a time value. It's got nothing to do with anything else, just time functions. So let's put you in. And in the way you are, it's like, damn, I'm gonna take advantage of this. Uh, and then you'll probably, you're the type that will reverse age by say eight, 10 years. So in about a month or two, you look at her and she'll do stuff that's like a younger woman's, you know, adventure type stuff. And it's like, damn. And then her joints, all those things start to accommodate at that as well as a younger woman. So uh, it's almost like you kinda, almost hit 55, whatever happened at 55 to you, adventure yourself as a 55 year old woman and then kind of bounce around. Does that make sense to you? What happened to you at 55? I'm trying to think. Uh, let's see what happened. There's a loss, maybe not of your husband or whatever, but loss of a parent or a dear friend or it kind of like, you know, when people die, it awakens you to go, shit, I better live my life type feel. Kind of that kind of pattern. So whoever might have died or gotten ill or whatever, it really awakened you to go, I better get going. Does that make sense to you mm -hmm. around that time? So, yeah. I can't think of who it was, though, but it does make sense. Yeah, so, uh, well, probably at 52. I'll just get, yeah. So anyway, it's that's illness or death or that wake you up. But the pattern is the same, whoever. It'll come to you later, okay? Does that make sense though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, you're a quick fix, by the way. So it's just like, it's like I'm ready, I'm going, I don't care. I don't care about belief systems or how this works or whatever. Let's just do it, you know? So I locked you into your body. How's your lower back feel? Feels good. Yeah. So you get more mobility, all that stuff, literally. You literally seem to like, reverse age within the next few weeks. Okay. It's really cool, so Thank can you. you do me a favor, hon? Yeah. Can you take photographs sure. and note how you feel mm -hmm. and just like send them in, we won't use your name or anything, okay. but it's just really cool to see okay. on how fast somebody can change. Uh, hey buddy, just one second. How you doing, man? Good. Questions? No. Not really, you just want me to work on you? Okay. Sure. Um, you really have really nice abilities, but you know, you, I mean, um, you're defining yourself, your family's changed a lot since, you know, they've been working with me, which is really cool. But let's, in the past, I think you were very fearful. Mm -hmm. Then you always guarded yourself. Does that make sense? Or you yeah. isolated yourself for protection. Yeah. So. And I think that's why you're here. It's like, you know what? Now I don't have to guard myself. I don't have to protect myself because now it's a burden. Maybe in the past, you probably protected yourself from your dad or whatever, mm -hmm. from what I'm seeing, or grandfather, whatever that is. It doesn't really matter. You know, you children create a boundary around them, right? Especially if they're bright. They go, I know that shit's wrong. I don't want any of that. So they create a boundary when you're bright. But then over time, you age and you go, I haven't figured out a way, and then you know you get older a little bit. It's like I guess dad's right or whatever, and then you turn into your dad or grandpa or whatever. But now again, you guys are awakened. Now it's like you know I can just disconnect. I don't need that pattern anymore. So you're here to go. You know what, Moss? Can you just remove that so I can just f know that I'm strong? You know, and just live like a gladiator, right? And just jump into life, and that way people won't bully you or whatever that stuff is that happened to you earlier. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So, 
By the way, that's how bullying happens, young kids. It's got nothing to do with character, the way people look, all that stuff, you know? It's just that, and it happens to the strongest kids. He's a strong kid, he literally is an anchor. He's probably an anchor, he used to be an anchor for your mom, uh, and even your dad. So he's an anchor. Little kids who have, say, issues in the house, you know, drunk parents, addicted type parents, they will latch onto him as a support system. So how they latch onto him is make him feel like crap. You're no good, you're this, you're that, whatever it is, because it makes you feel weak. When you're a kid, you know, you're trying to define yourself, and then what do you do? It's like, oh, I better accommodate what they want from me. Well, what they want from you is to open up, and then they make you, well, your friends or whatever, or they keep bullying you. Either way, even your friends at the time kind of bullied you, so, so no more. Uh, the good thing is, since you become a leader, right, a strong light, uh, just note, when this pattern is down or dismantled for you, people will start to rush into you, so it's your job, I can't do that for you. You have to confirm the deletions by pushing people away, okay, at first, or saying no or whatever it is, right? So be strong, and then it becomes second nature to you, and then you become a leader or a light, and the kids go, damn, that kid's got, he, he's strong. He's not allowing anybody in. He's not a support, but he's a strong being. I want to be like that. So watch out for girls. <laughs> you don't want to play the, you're very handsome. You don't want to play that, you know, uh, white knight type syndrome where like girls just like latch on to you and just like drag you down. I'm just, my kids are like, my boys are like that. So they learn really fast, so just helping you learn really fast. It's not that you can't help people like that, it's just that they have to define themselves first and then they can run with you. Okay? All right, nice job, man. Feeling good? Yeah. Nice, so. Do you guys see how bullying, uh, we could do bullying just as a free, say, meta healing for a lot of kids, by the way. Uh, other people? Uh, you in the scarf, orange, yeah, you. Um, I don't know if you've lost kids or people in your family have lost kids. Um, I have three abortions. Okay, so do you, do you wanna hold the mic, sorry? Um, I don't know if you wanna share that, but anyway. She's lost kids, okay? Um, and there's no judgment on my part but there's a lot of judgment on your family, family structure, society, all that stuff that just shames you because there's a pattern of shame in your family. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hence, you would do things, whether it's right or not, it's not up to me, but you would do things according to society's values that would shame you, burden you, and then when that happens, you would, say, attract men that would shame you and burden you and then use you. So that's basically your whole life structure. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you see how we can just like boil it down? It's not about, well, in this situation, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to have hold these values, all that stuff. No, it's just the freaking frequency that operates in you. You change that frequency, you just change your patterns. So yes, there's things that you do, but again, no matter what you do, if you don't delete those patterns or frequencies, it'll keep running and you've tried say the last three relationships that you've had, you try to be very different. It's like, okay, I'm gonna consciously choose these people, and then they've turned into the same people, or maybe even worse. Does that make sense to you? So she kind of moved from her groin area of being abused into her heart space, which was damaged, and now it's like, forget it. See, I saved myself because my kids. <laughs> I saved, <laughs> I'm gonna use my conscious, but then it, doesn't matter, because you know how you, say, analyze things, always bring you back to the same formula. So anyway, let's remove that, let's remove the, say, the three kids that are still kind of hanging out with you, so to speak. By the way, it's, you're not the only one that's lost kids in your family. So 
that's a pattern too. Uh, holy shit. Um, I'm seeing somebody that has lost way more than four kids. So, so even that, uh, again, um, women looked down upon in your family culture, so, uh, or used, say, as a toy or an object, uh, possession, those kind of patterns from what I'm seeing. So, so in that situation, how would a woman feel? Right? He'd, you'd never feel good about yourself. Women like this, they create mass levels of success because they're gonna go, I'm gonna dominate this place. I'm not gonna feel that way anymore. What happens? The money, that the success that they create just shames them to death. So you can never get away until you disconnect from it. So anyway, let's get rid of all that for you. There's other stuff, but we don't need to talk about that. So, just want to talk a little bit about the Me Too movement. Got nothing against the Me Too movement, but if you're trying to push for safety, like a lot of Me Too movement individuals do, are you gonna, ever going to get safety? You never will. So, if you want to do the Me Too movement, be a strong woman. Again, you've got to delete those underlying patterns. Okay. So. Questions, honey? How are you feeling? I think a lot of guilt just released off. It's just like a, when I feel you, it's like, whew, I can just release all that. Yeah, you feel lighter. There you go. So. And then there's no good, bad, or anything like that. You just delete the patterns, okay? You learn from whatever happened. You know, morality is very fickle, right? Culture, time frames, you know, women, men, age, all that stuff, different moralities. What we're talking about is one morality, just the human morality, right? So that's what you're gonna base yourself on, so. Um, I don't know if you're in a relationship or you just recently broke up with one or whatever that feels like, so. In between. In between? Well, in one. Okay, okay, well. Wondering. Okay, so, um, yeah. So, um, say you don't run those patterns anymore of being shamed or guilted or whatever. So that, that, so if he changes to accommodate your new patterns, then that relationship would work. But he, it seems like he's really, the more that you change, the more dominant, he forces you to stay where you are. So from what I'm seeing, does that make sense to you? So how do you get out of that relationship? That's probably your next question. The best way to do that Again, especially if like for women, you know, security, right, is really important. So what do you do is that you, st in this relationship, you figure out all the weaknesses that you have, so use them as a coach. You figure out all the weaknesses that you have, strengthen from it, and then there's no way that him or anybody else can destroy you that way. And then, again, if he changes, most likely he decides he's saying no. He's more like my way or the highway type of feel. So he can't control you. There's no way he can control you. And then it just breaks. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So again, even that with women, it's like how do I get away with an abusive relationship because he's providing security. You create security internally. Once you create security internally, what will happen for you is that you'll attract security even finances, money, situations to, for you to say get away from that, okay? So, uh, by the way, you'll feel, you're safer now than ever. So don't use safety or insecurity to run back, stay strong, okay? That part I can't do for you, okay? And speak up. If they're wrong, they say something to you, say something back, it'll shock them. It's like, whoa, she's got a voice. Okay? Yeah, those things I can't do for you. But. Uh, other, somebody new, I can work on you, or you, sure. Uh, you, yeah, I'll work on you afterwards. Um, your family's really intuitive, really gifted. Um, you know, so back in the day, uh, you probably did seances and, you know, 
mystical arts, and there's nothing wrong with that, with culture, custom, whatever it is, but what happens is that over time, it was probably a pure art, but then over time, it kind of got darker and darker and darker, and now it's become like oppressive for you. Does that make sense to you? So the more you use it, basically the more oppressed you get. So, does that make sense to you? And then, and then who you connect to is basically loved ones on the other side. So the consciousness of loved ones. So basically that's a death pattern for you. So this reality feels like death to you or a burden of death. So, get it? Yep. Okay. It's got nothing to do with who you are, what you're doing, anything like that, no matter where you go, how wealthy you become, who, whatever happens. You could have the most fantastic, say, luxury or lifestyle. With this pattern, you'll feel the burden, say, of death and all that even more. Let's get rid of that. It's almost like a contract that you might have signed. So, say somebody wanted, and by a contract, just to clarify, say like you pray to something or someone, first it's God, right? But who the hell knows what the definition of God is, right? Your definition came from a religious standpoint or parents' values of defining. So it's like you define God as best it can be, and again, I'm just deleting all the patterns. You hold on to a lot of burdens. So when you read people, I don't know if you read people or you sense people, you hold on to them. You, like, you're like a test tube. Basically, you get a snippet of their frequencies, you bring them into you, you feel them, and then when you're done with them, you don't get rid of their patterns. You put them in your, this area, and that's why you have issues in this area. So, get it? At least you could, throw them away. <laughs> so let's help you with that, first of all. But anyway, um, so say you pray to God. You don't even know what God is, and then, well, God doesn't show up for some reason, right? And then after a while, you get desperate. It's like, hell, I'll pray to anything. Can anybody help you? A light comes in. It makes you feel good. Again, it's a brighter light because it's higher than you, but it's on the dark side. And then that's how you go, oh wow. And they give you money, they give you fortune, they give you abilities, they give you whatever it is, like a lot of the artists, right? Fantastic stuff, fantastic music, whatever it is, but they own you. So you're feeling like, the older that you get, the more that you're realizing that something else or someone owns your life. So, so that's what's happening for you. And again, it's not even her contract. The thing when you sell your soul, say, who was it? I don't know, famous artist. We can pick anybody. Um, I think it was Bob Dylan. He goes, oh, I sold my soul to the devil. He literally said that, so it's not my words, it's his. So say his children, they're basically sold until somebody breaks that contract. Just like your genetic structure, right? Same thing. Same thing as contracts. Nothing different. So again, <clears throat> in your family, somebody wanted some great abilities to help people sell themselves the wrong way, kind of got manipulated, like a lot of you probably did, maybe at a lighter level. And then unfortunately, um, so it's not even your contract. So let's just get rid of it for you since it's not your contract. That's a valid case. How are you feeling? Better? Yeah. Yeah. So since you're intuitive enough, so instead of, it's basically, think of it as, as cable providers. This cable provider charges the hell out of you. It's not good reception. Uh, again, so I just like disconnect you from that cable provider, put you in this cable provider that actually gives you nourishment as you, the more you use it, okay? But in between, You'll probably lose your abilities, sense of self, identities, you'll get confused. Just stay in your body. Okay, as like the new cable service kicks in. So, does that make sense to you? So, and again, it's a quick, fast one. So, um, but oh, you seem to talk to the dead. There'll probably be more coming at you to s be saved. It's not your place yet. I can help you later on, okay? So don't accept anybody. So, uh, other people? 
Yeah, you the sweater. Oh, sorry. Um, let's have her and then you. I forget. Anything special, or do you just want me to read you? Just read. Okay. Um, you have a manly frequency to you, uh, so basically either protecting yourself from men or from what I'm seeing, uh, your mom, grandma, so on like that, was say the men in your family weren't around, something happened to them, they would take the charge or the mandrel from what I'm seeing. So you adopted that pattern as the provider, the support person, that kind of feel. That makes sense to you? Strong mother. Strong mother. That's where, <laughs> <laughs> that's why she's a strong mother. <laughs> okay. However you cut it. Okay, you have a strong mother. How's that? Had strong mother, okay? A masculine frequency, let's just put it that way, okay? So anyway, strong mother's totally fine, but it's a masculine frequency that makes her strong, and she's more masculine. Okay, you can be a strong woman being a mother, which is very different than a strong mother who has, you know, and again, it's not a bad place, it's from a loving place, I don't see the abuse, all that stuff, although very strong uh, or abrasive at times. But again, it's not a female frequency, okay? You can be a strong female running feminine strength rather than a masculine frequency covering you up. Okay, does that make sense to you? So, um, anyway, let's help you define yourself more, ma uh, more feminine, okay? Again, I'm not pushing or guiding you. So, you know, your midsection, again, feels more masculine to me, so, um, not to get too personal, but say intimacy, you're more uh, the aggressor type type pattern uh, because again, more masculine type. So you would see sensuality, intimacy, uh, making the first move, all that stuff. Again, that would be say the masculine definition. So it's not you, or, but say that you're genetically not um, heterosexual, okay? You're lesbian or, or gay, okay? Genetically, you're not. Um, so an extreme version of her is that she runs such a masculine pattern that then she might think that she's lesbian or she's confused or she's bi or whatever that is, but again, chemically or DNA structure, she's not. So there's a difference. There's a difference when people own, say, their, their their preference, and then most or a lot don't. It's just such a strong, say, masculine, or if you're female, or if you're male, running a feminine pattern of strong frequencies that you get totally confused on who you are. That makes sense to you guys on how that works? The LGBT type communities, they're really confused. You know, they don't know who they are. This is the reason why. A lot of them aren't even chromosome-wise gay or lesbian. They're just like, parents weren't strong identities of a male or female, so. Uh, um, the important thing is whatever you are, you have to own it. So, a lot of heterosexuals don't own it, so. Because there's no good definition of, say, a solid man or a solid female, so. There you go. Anyway, uh, peeling away that uh, layer for you. So for you, uh, again, you don't believe it quite yet, which is totally fine, it doesn't matter. I bypass all your belief systems or the way you hold on to things as an identity because you're so strong. Again, strong mind. Um, it bypasses that, you'll get really weak, you'll see things differently and that's where you say slowly transition into more feminine perspective. So, all right, hon? Again, this isn't about a belief system. There you go. We're good. Thank you, yes. So it's not about a belief system. It doesn't matter what you believe in, not believe in. 
you're, pr you're encoded, your program runs optimal human, that's what, I get you to, that's what I get you to operate out of, an optimal human. It bypasses your beliefs on how you think, who you think, where you are, I don't believe this, I don't believe that. It doesn't matter, it just doesn't matter. It just puts you into that optimal state. Okay, that's why it's so effective. Uh, anybody else? Uh, oh, who was I gonna pick? Yeah, you. Um, uh, yeah, you can come afterwards. Um, anything special? Yeah, I've had this really resilient illness in my reproductive I'm organs. Sorry. Yeah, um, that's what yeah. I see. It just seems like somebody died mm. when you were young. So, or a fear of death when you were young, or it could be you almost dying when you were young. Does that make sense to you? Mm, I don't think I don't have any memory. Okay, oh. Mm, are you, where, are, where do you fall in the family? Finland. Huh? So, sorry? So like, are you, do you have a sibling? Oh yeah, I have three. Yeah, that are younger than you, or? Mm, one older and one ten years younger. Okay, ten years younger? Mm -hmm. One same age as I am. Yeah, so there was one in the middle from what I'm seeing that didn't make it. So, mm. so they literally attached onto you. So you could probably ask your mom one too. There's actually two. So I don't know how old are you. How old are you? Uh, 29. Okay. So we'll talk about that too because you feel like 17 to me. Um, so anyway, so um, so one, they're attached into this area, so again, that death, uh, which slows down time. So if you look at it, so you were probably, I wanna say eight, nine, 10, when that death occurred. Does that make sense to you, or something to that? Maybe, I can't really tell, because time just is distorted for you. So say that death occurs, it slows, or it stops time, or somebody got ill or your mother, again, probably from the death got ill or whatever it is, it slowed down time, does that make sense? So basically for every year of time, you only grow maybe nine months. So you're 29, you feel spiritually, so even if I didn't see you, you would be at 17. Hence, your emotional state, your, I don't say your intelligence, but your aptitude, all that, is at a 17 year old level. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, very much. So, that's where, though, um, and that's, I wanna say it, yeah, uh, 16, 17, I think something else kinda stunted you as well. Yeah, so, again, it just solidified that you should stop time or slow down time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, we don't have to get into whatever happened. That's your story. So, do you guys see how you can stop time if you're really powerful enough, so she's got powerful abilities, but she doesn't use it well. This is where she can manipulate time, uh, even like astro travel, like you have to escape from what I'm seeing mm -hmm. when you were younger. So when she astro travels, say that she's gone for maybe a few hours, okay? In another time frame, she might have been gone for just a minute or two here, okay? But again, it distorts her because she's on another time frame. Again, she could be traveling for, I don't know, a year. She comes back and it's like, oh, wait a second. What time is it here? And it's only gone for, say, a half hour or whatever it is. It messes her, say, uh, chemical structure up. And her nervous system, because your nerves seem kind of short-circuited mm -hmm. as well. So. Maybe as you age, again, I'm not a doctor, but it just seems like you'll have, I mean, it's happening now. Uh, your nerves are irritated, so you have, I don't say nerve damage, but mm, aches and pains that can't be unexplained, or can't be explained, that kind of feel for you at a young age because of time values, so. Because uh, your, your, well, your nerves are electrical, and it runs on a clock, just like everything, like your computer runs on a clock. So again, it's just, so let's just reset your clock, okay? Uh, one thing, though, is, is as you age, it's nice to look younger. So we'll lock that frame, and that's like if you do the frequency spas, 
you know, the frequency spa, meta healings that I do, that's how I get you to look and say younger or reverse age. Basically, I lock the time frame of your biological clock. I either lock it in time if you're young or just reverse it for you. Okay, and, it's, and it sounds kind of strange, but this is where women that's gone through menopause, you know, you reverse that clock and they start having their cycles again and all that, because it's, I mean, that, it's just literally, that's, that's a sign of youth, so. So that clockwork, just to kind of slow down, everything else will speed up for you. So I see you as 17, 18, 19 at the most. You're 29, say about 11 years of growth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. So in about a year. So you're gonna grow, f so what that means is you're gonna experience a year's worth of experiences in about a little over a month. Yeah, it's pretty exciting <laughs> for people who've gone through it, and it's just life goes by like that for you. Uh, but you grow up to that space, and then you're youthful and vibrant, okay? But you're not gonna look like a kid or feel like a kid to people. You're just gonna look youthful and vibrant and really highly intelligent. Does that make sense to you? So you're gonna have a grand time. I see you traveling a lot, so. You're gonna go here, you're gonna go there, you're gonna go there, everywhere from what I'm seeing. But anyway, you pull in. The cool thing about that too is that you get to see, kind of like a buffet, you're gonna taste all, and then it only takes a year, so you're still young. So by the time you hit 32, you get to decide, I wanna be this, I wanna be this, I wanna be this, I wanna be this, I wanna have this kind of lifestyle, kind of like a checklist of all you want, kind of like ordering online, you know? You know, this, 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 you hit the submit button in about mid-30s from what I'm seeing, if you continue on especially. Um, it's like you ordered, this is the life that you ordered. It comes in for you. Get it? You have really nice abilities, by the way. They can help you hone them. That makes sense to you? Yes. So, really exciting for you. Your mom kind of feels unstable to me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, her mom feels unstable. Basically, when she's a kid, she sees mom all over the place. So it's like, if that's good for mom, although it doesn't feel good to me because I can see mom distorted, you get to a certain age, especially when a death occurs, basically. Yeah, from when I'm seeing a loss of a kid, she gets totally, say, unstable. And then, well, that's the way I should be too. Got it? So, all that's removed for you. So, nice job, honey. Very quick. Uh, if there's time distortions, things of that nature, guys, it's usually like within a couple sessions, you literally just clean up. Do you wanna come on, my friend? Anything special you wanna work on? Okay. Uh, how young are you? 74. Got it. You feel like you have a spirit of a, uh, a young kid in you still. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You never grew up. I love it. <laughs> uh, but then when you were a kid, I think it's like you were always forced to be an adult or take care of things or that kind of feel. So you never had a chance to be a kid. That's probably true. You know what I mean? It's like, I have to do this, I have to take care of this, I have to, a lot of whatever. So it's like, when I get this done, I'm gonna go back and be a kid. But then now you're 74 and you're still going like, well, when am I gonna get to be a kid? So let's help you get to be a kid. So for people like that, it's kind of seems a little strange, but for people like you, you're a little older, it's like a red carpet rolls out for you. and just stuff just happens for you. It's like adventure, you know, some of the stuff that he's always wanted as a young kid. You know, if, you, if you've got grandkids or you get connected with the younger kids and you go play around with their, I don't know, Snerf guns, all that stuff as a kid, you know, you'll go back to that. So um, that's why I have so many kids. It gives me a good excuse to play with the latest games. So. 
So you go back literally and just live life as a young child in your 20s and all those things for you. Does that make sense for you, my friend? Huh? Nice job. Do you guys sense the youthfulness in him, the vibrancy? Isn't that beautiful? No. Uh, you just let burdens wash off you, don't you? Kind of like a, what did they say, duck? Water? Water off a duck. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of your sayings too, right? Mm -hmm. Mine, make it favorable, is whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay. Or whatever. Yeah, so, if you want to copy a pattern, guys, copy his. <laughs> So for you, again, resetting you and then also helping you kind of like reverse age so you hold up as you go doing the young things that you want to do, okay? And then you go look back, it's like, yeah, that was a full life. So yeah, that's good. Just wrapping up, polishing some of those things for you. By the way, there's very few people that I see solid like you, so nice job, my friend. Thank you. Very nice, thank you. So, he gets it, he offers from it. I said, this way. Um, um, I've worked on you before. Anybody, I'll take you. Yeah, way in the back. Yeah, what up? Oh, you're not, uh, oh, I'll pick you anyway. Come on, I'll, I'll get you. Um, Yeah, yeah, you flew a long way, so you're here. Um, and fantastic woman, I did a event with her. Um, yeah. Um, she, I did a conference on food, uh, changing frequencies of food. You know, where it's not just like genetic structure of seeds, but literally frequency structure of seeds. So, so say you have a plant. Right, it absorbs the frequencies of the person because that's the dominant frequency in that. So say when farmers plant things, right, it's the farmer's frequency that gets imbued in the seeds as well, not just water, all that stuff. So hopefully we'll do and we'll get some scientific research. It's like, well, resonating frequencies of a healthy frequency, not just healthy, uh, again, soil and all that, and see how the plants react and how nutritious uh, the, the the plant is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I explain it right? I think you got it right. All right. So, so from what I've seen, it seems like your kids are changing, or they might be kind of like all over the place and not yeah. sure. Yeah. Maybe sometimes all hell kind of breaks loose. It's a good place to be. You know, your life breaks apart, breakups, all that stuff. It's because it has to break apart because it's it couldn't be fixed any other way. So it's like let's break this thing apart and then. We'll put it together. Yep. So that's where you are. Yep, so right. a nice place. And then uh, other questions that you have? I'm ready. That per I'm that person. I'm ready. Whatever it takes right now, I'm ready to go. It's really a good attitude to have, and that's why, you know, you move quite fast mm -hmm. for you, so. And I'm concerned about my kids. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. Um, and I just want to give you a heads up. You know, when you, and all of you guys, when you start to see changes, you get better at life, don't worry about anybody else. I know that sounds selfish. Don't worry about anybody else. Because, you know, you're just coming to a place where you're level, where you can breathe, where you can save yourself, okay? So get strong first, notice where you are, understand where you are, and then you can help more people that way. Because say you just save yourself from drowning, you're tired out, right? Are you gonna have enough strength to pull somebody else out? Okay, you're not. So again, save, then you both drown. So what I'm telling you is get on board, get, get on shore, just wait a couple seconds or, you know what I mean, whatever it takes, you know, and then you can throw that rope out rather than sinking yourself, jumping in after somebody, okay? Because I see you kind of doing that mm -hmm. in your family especially if they're ill or they're too old, it doesn't matter, okay? Save yourself, then your family, and then it all is better, and then other people will just gravitate towards you, okay? Beautiful. Yeah, so if you were one, were you wondering that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why, yeah. so. Thank you. You bet. Um, 
and some of you guys, you know, you awaken and somebody's dying of whatever. It's like, God, Moss can help save him and stuff. And again, it sounds kind of weird, but don't worry about them, okay? Your light, even if the cross is over, it's better than what they've had in the past anyway, okay? So again, it's all about you connecting stronger and then saving other people, okay? Um, anybody else? Uh, you, the little girl. Hi, sweetie. How are you doing? Good. Um, any questions or just working on you? No? I guess. Um, so you need to take ownership of who you are. You really can't say it's because of the teachers or because of this or because of your mom or whatever. Does that make sense to you? You need to, how old are you? 12. 12. You feel like you're eight. So you haven't taken on the responsibility. And it's probably because your mom, okay? Your mom just like suffocates the hell out of you. And basically it doesn't, she doesn't or he doesn't, either or, doesn't allow you to be who you are, you know, because maybe your mom's insecure, whatever it is. And again, no offense if the mom's here. I'm just telling you like it is. So a lot of people or a lot of parents have kids just because of this reason. They have kids because they need a support person to make them feel secure, or make them feel important. It's kind of like the worst reason to have a kid, but anyway, it is what it is. So you have to say, stand up for yourself and not get pushed around by your mom or anybody else, including, say, video games, you know, time references that distort you, losing yourself in other things. It's your life. You're 12, honey. You feel like eight. You're a third off, well, a quarter off. That's a long time. So let's just say you're 30, you'll feel like that other girl, like 20, okay? When you're 60, if you continue on, you'll, yeah, life is not gonna be happy for you. I'm just giving you what it is. I've seen enough people. So again, it's time for you to wake up, take your own responsibility, you know, make dinners for the family, clean up after yourself, if you don't do that, whatever it is, whether your mom tells you to or not, again, you take charge. That makes sense? It helps your mom to find herself as well because all of you are waking up. Okay, everybody has a role in family. Does that make sense? My kids are, gosh, well, they're eight now, but when they were like th four or five, they used to do stuff. It, one, it helps them dignify themselves, who they are, right? helps them, gives them a sense of responsibility. And if you see my kids, they're strong kids. Do you know why they are? Because I push them to be strong kids, right? So for you, if your mom coddles you, whatever, it's not a good thing. Again, it might feel good, but it just makes you weak. And then you get pushed around at school. Does that make sense to you? Same thing. And then you grow older, you'll attract a, uh, a man that will not make you feel good, and then you get used, abused. So, okay? Let's just get rid of all that for you, okay? There's a lot of, there's a strong, say, identity that you have that's deep inside, and you know that, I can see that deep inside of you. It's really important, because you're getting into, say, puberty, right? You're coming into, say, a younger woman, so that has to be defined. So let's help you define, say, that sense of strength so you operate from that sense of strength. That makes sense to you, hon? Okay? Again, take ownership now. Even, I don't know, do you pick your own clothes or? Yeah, all the time I have uniforms at school. What? I have uniforms at school. Okay. But it's, make your own choices. I just see that somebody else makes your own choices for you to make it easier for you. Don't make it so easy on yourself, okay? Just do your own thing. Uh, there we go. And probably for the mom, it's like, gosh, that's another thing I messed up on, because that's your pattern, by the way, okay? Not that you messed up on, it's just family value, family culture. Nobody knew any better way. So instead of going, that's another thing I messed up on, and kick yourself, it doesn't do her any good because she's still young. It doesn't do you any good, so wake up and do it right, okay? Don't go, gosh, 
you know, and beat yourself up because that's your pattern. Stand up, wake up, do it right. If you don't like something, change it. Whether it's you, your husband, whoever else it is, you know, call it out. That make sense to you? Okay? Um, that's another thing with EI. And you can have a seat, sweetie. Um, <laughs> nice job. She's got the guts, right? That's good. That's going to take you far really far, especially if you practice EI. So for you, hon, do the 21 days on your own. Don't wait for your mom or dad or whatever to go, I'm gonna get on the 21 days. Because young people like that, within 21 days you do it consistently, totally different, it'll help your parents, by the way, because again, you know, your parents need help. They did the best that they could do for you, but they've got a lot of baggage over the years, you're younger, you can get stronger faster and disconnect their patterns from you, which allows them to see and disconnect their patterns from the, from, from, from the adults, okay? So again, we have to stand up. Something about EI that I wanna talk about, guys. EI is a tool. It's not a saving grace, it's nothing like that. It's a freaking tool. If you use it wrong, okay, it'll cut your hand off and it just literally is a tool. It's not like, Oh, EI is gonna save me. It doesn't work that way. If you wake up, and this is a great example, say that you run abuse patterns, okay? And you wake up to the fact that you run abuse patterns using EI. So this is where you confirm the deletions, right? You're running abuse patterns, you connect with a relationship that abuses you, and you go, that relationship is gonna abuse me. And then, why am I holding this mic? <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, uh, where was I? So anyway, you look at that person and it just says, that person is gonna abuse me, okay? Person's abuse you and then you go, I'm gonna date that person and go out with them. What did you just confirm or not confirm, okay? You just confirm that you wanna run the pattern that you used to. So whatever I did for you, it magnifies. Because it's your pattern, okay? So all the awarenesses that you had to wake up to the fact that you're getting, say, abused, okay? You're gonna use it against you. Because now, you're getting abused as you're awake. It hurts a hell of a lot more for those people who didn't confirm their deletions. Now it's okay to make mistakes, learn from it, and move on, okay? Does that make sense to you guys how that works? It's just the tool, it magnifies whatever that you're running, okay? So again, you don't say delete those patterns or go, I'm not gonna date that person because I know they're gonna abuse me right off the bat so I disconnect, but you continue on. So again, that programming that was your mom or dad's is now your program. You installed it on your hardware. It owns you. You operate from that at a magnified version. It's more powerful because it's not somebody else's program. It's yours. Again, it's a magnification process. The next time you don't say delete, again, say you attract another person, okay, because that relationship didn't work out, the abuse gets more. And this has happened to people who don't, okay? Um, this is just give you a, a quick story before we do the 21 days and then I'll work on the VIPs. Um, so this woman, she gets attracted to, say, insecure men that have a lot of money. How many of you have heard that pattern before? So she wakes up, she's good for a while, right? Then she connects with this handsome man that's got a lot of money, okay? She deleted her patterns she didn't delete her patterns, and she knew when she called me up in an emergency call, she knew, it's like, God, I knew I shouldn't have gone to that hotel room, I just knew it, it was such a strong force, um, but, you know, it's literally like, it's like my spirit was telling me to say no, but it's like literally I forced myself, okay? Within about half an hour, got totally beat up, because that was her pattern, totally black and blue all over, so again, all she had to do was, and that was a strong abuse pattern, by the way, all she had to do was say no, but she was sucked in with the security of money or whatever it was, okay? Again, if it's that strong for you, listen to your 
intuition, listen to your emotions, because it's accurate for you now. Okay. That part I can't do for you, and you can't, hi sweetie, time? Yeah, so that part I can't do for you, and then also don't blame me if you get abused, distorted, and all that if you didn't confirm your deletions. It's like, again, a tool, okay? So I can only do things so far for you, kind of like the, I don't know, uh, an Olympic coach. I can train you and all that, but once you're on that stage, you're on that stage, right? It's you, okay, guys? We're gonna do the meditations, uh, and then we'll call it a night. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, go ahead and get comfortable, get situated. If you guys want to stand up or sit down, or if you want to lie down, you guys can. Uh, one second, guys. Should be on both lines. Yeah, we should be on both lines now. Could somebody hit record, please? So this is, I don't know, day 12, day 13 of uh, the 21 Day Accelerated, okay? So it's higher frequency, so if you're new to me, it just means more detox, it just means intense change for you, okay? So uh, again, sitting, standing, lying down, getting comfortable where you are, just noticing you, noticing the space around you, noticing you, where you are, whether you're here in this room, whether you just logged in or I logged in for the 21 Day Accelerated or whatever, uh, you're online, whichever it is, notice. Notice my voice coming through, whether you're here in live or again through a computer, telephone, whatever it is. Notice the way you're sitting or standing or lying down. Notice the top of your head. Again, I'll just uh, work on the front here. We're gonna go deeper. Uh, we're gonna understand the mechanics of what we talked about, the underlying reason or the truth. Notice the distraction of speaker. Oh, it's me. Just one second. creating too much frequency here. <laughs> anyway, let's take a deep breath in. Start all over. Again, notice the details of the room, all five senses. Okay, touch, sight, sound, feeling, taste. Breath in again. Just noticing where you are. connecting to, not really a mastermind group, but pushing you into a new consciousness. Again, for the new people, it might distort you. But for the people who are on the accelerated, again, a welcoming. For the new people, you might feel a little, say, uncomfortable. Breath in again. So we ask ourselves, how do I connect to the purest source possible? How do I connect the pure source even stronger?
as we settle into the pedestal, the base, if you're not familiar with it, just pay attention to the base of your spine, your, uh, your tailbone. Again, sorry for the distraction, but work it into your meditation. So what that means is pay attention to, say, that static. Focus in on any body part. As soon as that static occurs, focus in on any body part. It'll push you into time even more. By the way, that's a great tip for you to turn distractions into a great opportunity to pinpoint where you are, which gives you, say, massive strength because that distraction is pulling you into the moment. Don't let it lose you. Use it to pinpoint where you are. Okay, so again, notice the distraction, whatever it is. Pay attention to any, say, specific body part. Just noticing the space around you, noticing you. Noticing your pedestal, the base, breathing in from the core of the earth, solid, consistent frequencies of abundance. If you think about it, the earth has been, well, it's been around for a few billion years or more. Uh, and it's always learned how to, say, come up ahead, stronger, more vibrant, timeless. It's been around for a billion of years, but again, fresh. That's a cool pattern to copy. Noticing your breath. say much. I'll just work on you in silence because it's not about what I say. Take a deep breath in again from the core of the earth, whether you're here, whether you're online. Just imagine breathing in those frequencies all the way up. Imagine that you're a sponge absorbing those frequencies right into every cell of your being. Imagine defining your body, the perimeter of your body for the accelerated, recreating that body the way it should be to hold on to higher frequencies. As I work on you, pushing you into those higher frequencies to allow you to see who you are, and who you're not, the baggage that you're carrying Again, it's your responsibility to let go of that baggage. I can only show you the baggage.
Just noting your breath. Whether you're here, whether you're online. No matter where you are, you can't deny those frequencies that I'm generating. You can try to stop them, you can try to protect yourself, you're not really protecting yourself. Protecting from not changing because you're afraid. It won't work. That's why you're here. You won't change. That's what you're going to get. Whether you like it or not, your expectations on how to change, it doesn't matter. It's not up to you. It's not up to me. It's up to your higher self. The easier you go along with your higher self, the easier it becomes for you to change. Right? If you think you're f protecting yourself, you're not. It's just fear patterns. It just hurts more.
taking a cleansing breath in. Be a nice, strong breath in. Noticing your body. Noticing your environment around you, your sphere of influence. Noticing, especially for those with accelerated, your environment does not match who you are anymore. Because it's not who you are anymore. So obviously you have to <coughs> change. As you notice your spine. That take you deeper. Patterns that have been controlling you will come out. So acknowledge them, notice them, don't operate from them. Don't blame anybody, don't blame me. It's all the garbage that you wanted to get rid of. It's your opportunity to get rid of it, okay? So again, if you see darkness and entities, and again, that's your labeling, I'm just telling you. If you see the garbage, if you see whatever, it's you. You wanted to get cleaned up, giving you what you wanted. So, handle it, get rid of it, change your habits, take responsibility. I can't do that for you. It's against free will. Nobody can do it for you. God can't even do it for you. Your spirit can't even do it for you. Your conscious thought can't, is the only thing that can do it for you. That's why you have to confirm the deletions. You have to make a conscious effort to step up, show up, talk, do whatever it takes. As soon as you say, yes, I'm in, your spirit steps in, 
takes care of the rest. It can't do it without your conscious thought. So be truthful to yourself. Don't worry about ramifications, what if scenarios. That shit doesn't matter. When you step up, your spirit takes care of the rest. It's happened to, I don't know, 50, 100,000 people, well, whatever I've worked on. It'll happen to you, you're no different. Well, you are. But again, you're no different. You're running the same program as everybody else. You're just using it differently. Doesn't mean that you lose your identity. A lot of you are going, I'm gonna lose my identity if I give in. You're gonna find your identity, because that's not, this is not you. Abuse patterns, getting ill, getting abused, getting, I don't know, working your ass off for nothing, losing your life. Is that really you? Is that what you wanna hold on to? Is that what you're afraid of letting go of? Jesus Christ, no offense, but holy shit. So let's wake up, take charge, take a deep breath in, take command of your life. As we end, taking that in charge breath in. Again, taking commanding your breath into you like you own it. Like you own it, guys. So let's do it again. Take that breath in like commanding. Not a wimpy breath, not like should I take a breath? Should I deserve? Do I deserve that breath? Not that victimized breath. If you can't even take a good strong breath in, how are you going to operate your life? Again, I'm not trying to be mean, but take control of those little things. The bigger things show up. As we take that strong, controlled breath in, like you own it, you deserve it, it's your natural space to be abundant. Just like your breath, it provides all the things that you need without you knowing all the things that you need, it just happens to you. Whenever you're ready to exhale, for those who can, Standing in your power, continuing on, on your own, independent. Those of us who can't, on the exhale. Opening your eyes, feeling relaxed, refreshed, like you mean it, like you own it. Or if it's a detox, whatever that you might be feeling. All right, guys, it's been a fantastic night. Thanks for being here.
And me? Oh, awesome. So, and then uh, as I end, uh, I want to introduce my daughter to you. Uh, she's really a fantastic uh, individual, and she'll, well, she'll just tell you her story. Can I, can you get the mic for her? All right, so hold this too. So, hi guys, I'm Emmy Sajadi, and just when I went through middle school and high school, I felt so insecure and lost and anxious, and just, I was so shy, I couldn't make connections with people, and everything just seemed so far away, almost. And I didn't really look at what my dad did as the solution, just because it's like, oh, like, that's my that's dad, my that's dad. cool, and that's what he does, you know, it's not going to help me. And I just, I looked in so many places for just something that was real or something that would help me push myself forward or learn how to get rid of these patterns that I knew were holding me back. And it just hurt so much to know, or to want to be better, but not know how to get there. And then when I started high school, that's when I really started getting into my dad's 21 days meditations and just doing them consistently. I was, you know, nothing else had worked for me, so I was like, okay, you know what, I'll try this, I'll put my all into it what bad can come from that. And I started doing them for a few months consist consistently and I started seeing changes and it just opened up my eyes so much more. I finally felt like I was alive again and I wasn't, there wasn't all this stuff on my chest holding me back from who I really was and it just, it felt good. I felt like I could just breathe and be. And I look at all the other girls my age and it just breaks my heart to see them living the same way that I did, insecure, anxious, shy, and not knowing, not placing their worth in the right places, and not setting boundaries in the right way, and just not living their life to the fullest that they could be, and getting trapped in everybody else's and society's expectations. And it's a tough thing, uh, especially when you don't know how to get out of that. So I started putting together a course with my dad for mothers and teenage daughters, and um, it's a course for teenage daughters on how to be a strong and confident woman and recognizing the patterns that you have, why people have those patterns and how to get rid of them and just giving them the knowledge that they need to push themselves forward into the women that they could be and setting them up for success at a younger age. So if you guys want to find out more in depth about what I do, it's emmesajadi.com, E-M-M-E-S-A-J-A-D-Y. Very nice. <laughs> you took this, I'll take that. So, I just want to point out some things. She's a beautiful woman, and many people go, well, she's, like, say she get, she's going to get really successful, and then many people are going to go, well, she had it easy because she was pretty, or, you know, her dad did it, and all that. That's not true. You know, there's a lot of individuals who are high-level models, and all, so they're so distorted inside, right? So no matter what you look like, how you feel, and all that, it's what's inside that really counts. And she realized that actually it's a lot harder for her because, again, she has my name, right? She, she's beautiful and all that, thanks to her mother, uh, fantastic, right? But again, that carries a burden for her because now, she has to step up to the plate. Does that make sense? So people go, well, she's got it easy. That's not true. That's not true. You have to carry that burden and rise above it. There's a lot of, I say this because as you get older being a woman, especially beautiful woman, and that beauty I'm talking about comes from the inside, okay? Women especially are gonna attack the hell out of you. Not men, but women are gonna attack. They're more vicious than the men, right? There should be a Me Too movement against women against women. Women against women movement. Really, because, you know, you've done that for thousands of years as a protective space, right? So you start to become a strong woman, and then it starts to be okay to be or show off your strength. Men too, but we're talking about women. So we're going to take off, uh, not take off, but start to do, say, a woman's strong woman. I'm calling it the EI woman version. Later on we'll have the EI man, but again, the EI woman, because if you have strong women, it's a lot easier to transform your men. So that's our logic. So I'm a little too intense for younger people. 
So she's like offered to step in and kind of like intermediate because I look at things very differently, you know, and she's in her age group and all that. So it's, it's really a nice mix for her. Right? So uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, check the girls. Okay, so thanks, honey. Well, just, I'll be done. Let me give them a hug. All right? All right, guys. Thanks for being here, guys. And again, as we end, a lot of heavy stuff for you. Uh, whether you, uh, again, integrate it or not, it doesn't matter. It's about the frequencies that's generated for you. So nice job. Guys, notice what you notice, and then notice the details of what you're noticing. All right, guys? And hopefully I'll see many of you tomorrow. Yeah? Okay? Thank you so much. <laughs>